are you talking about, Pa? I got two of them. You're gonna love them. I don't know, Pa. Tigers are pretty dangerous. Where you plan on keeping these things? Oh, they're harmless. I'm just gonna let them run loose in the yard. Come on, come on, come on. Check them out. What? Have you lost your mind? Ugh. Ugh. Oh, here they are, Junior. This one's getting. This one's Felix. Whew. I thought you said you had real tigers, Pa. These are real tigers. Turf tigers. I'm gonna open my own neurotic lawnmower zoo. Uh, don't you mean exotic? That's what I said. I'm gonna fix these up and put them on display. I don't know, Pa. That's kind of touchy. Some of the mower rights people might be all over you if they find out you've been working on them. Ah, nobody's gonna find out. But I call my mower activist buddy Daryl Atkins. Let him know Daryl's working on some exotic mowers over here. Don't be scared, baby. Don't be scared. That's just a buzzer. Somebody's here. I gotta go see who it is. Can I help you with something? Yes. I'm Daryl Atkins from Big Cut Rescue, man. And I heard you got a couple of rare turf tigers on your property. Rare? You can buy them things all day long at any skag dealer. You do realize those mowers are endangered, man. All lawnmowers are endangered if being operated in the wrong hands. Those mowers are being operated by these hands, which are safe hands. I'm not too thrilled about you keeping those beautiful turf tigers caged up out there, man. They deserve to be free. I'm not breaking any laws, so I think it's time for you to leave. So why don't you just get out of here? Fine, if you want me to go, I'll go. But I'll be back to free those tigers, all right? You can't keep them caged up forever. You make me sick. Just try and stop the turf tiger king. Turn around it! Woo! Woo, 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 woo. <sighs> don't mess with the tigers, man! I love them! You just don't get it! I said get out of here! Weirdo! Stupid lower rights people. Junior! Put some blades on Kitten! I gotta go out and feed Felix some gas. He's thirsty. I don't know about Kitten. She seems a little agitated today. She's fine. Just put the blades on. All right, Pa. If you say so. Easy, girl, easy. Just gonna throw a set of blades on you. Calm down. Be all right. Whoa, easy. All right, here we go. Today's how-to video is gonna be on this here antique Briggs and Scranton power trial. This is a five horse power trial. Now I had this thing out in my junkyard and I was gonna scrap this thing several times, but all of a sudden now we realize that y'all like uh, all this old antique stuff. It's like, yeah, well it's just junk to me, but y'all out there like all this stuff. And Gina said, good thing you didn't scrap that, Dad. So here it is. This thing is old. Old Briggs and Scranton. So I looked at the, the model plate on it. And it doesn't have a code date. So we could tell how old it is. Because Briggs started that code dating in 1965. That's when they started putting a code date on there. So I got a hold of Briggs and Scranton. I think I talked to Scranton. Bonk. Briggs was busy. And he said, only thing we can tell you is when this engine was manufactured. We can't tell you exactly when because Briggs or Scranton, one of them, threw away all the paperwork. So they told me this engine was made between 
1958 and 1966. So we know it's not a 65 or 66 because it would have a code date on it. So I'm thinking probably early 60s, maybe 1960, maybe 1962, somewhere around there. Now, the cameraman's looking at this motor, and I don't know if you noticed it or not, but this engine could be mounted vertically or horizontally. You ever see that before? And I know what y'all are thinking, well, Terrell, you know, just somebody went and got a vertical sump and stuck it on a horizontal motor. No, because it's the same paint color. So nobody did that. You know who did that? Probably Briggs or Scranton, one of them two guys. So when I talked to Scranton on the phone, he said, we probably manufactured this engine for this company. Master Vibrator Companies who made it. That's a heck of a name for a company, huh? Master Vibrator Company. So they said that they probably manufactured a bunch of these engines just for them because you could do that. If you're a manufacturer, you can get a hold of an engine company, whether it's Briggs or Kroller or Kawasaki, and say, you know, we need, we need an engine that can be mounted horizontally or vertically. Could you make us such an engine? And they said, well, let me, let me talk to Briggs and see what he says. And then Briggs goes, well, what do you think, Scranton? Should we make a horizontal, vertical engine? Well, let's make them what they want. So that's what they did. So I don't know if you noticed this cover. Does this ring any bells, this cover? Remember I took this cover and made out of Terrell's custom crap? Remember? I made a light out of this. How about this nifty one from a recoil? Well, guess what? I had to take the light down because I had to do a video on this here uh, engine. So that's what I did. Took it off the wall, took the light out, went out in the junkyard, found another cover with that stamp in there and made me another light. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna try to get this thing going. And this is how I got it. I've had this thing been sitting outside at my shop for about five years and I don't know how long it had been sitting in the guy's barn that gave it to me. So the first thing you want to do is see if there's oil in it. It's a little low, so I'm gonna have to top it off. And I did pull on it and it does have compression. I did pull it and I thought, wow, this thing's got compression. So the next thing we're going to do is check for spark. Oh, and another reason I know, maybe the cameraman can catch this over here. Another reason I know this engine could be mounted horizontal or vertically is, look, this manifold piece. That's a special adapter they put on there. So if you want to mount this thing horizontally, you could take that adapter out, flip that carburetor up so it'll run horizontally. and somebody put a new plug in it. Probably the guy I got it from. Plug still looks good for sitting out there. Like I said, this thing been sitting outside here for about five years. Let's leave that out, then we'll check for sparkage. No spark. Now this thing's got points condenser in it because it's that old, so. Chances are the points condenser are probably all corroded or wore out. So we're going to take this cover off. So looky here, they incorporated a rope pulley so you can tie a rope to it in case, in case the recoil broke. You can take this off and put a piece of rope on there and still get this thing started because, you know, this is concrete equipment. And when you got that concrete down, that concrete ain't going to wait for you to go to the mower shop and get that 
recoil fix. You gotta get that, gotta get that concrete finished. So that was a good idea. But of course, you know, throw all safety to the wind, because when you start this thing, it's gonna be spinning with that cover off. And there's no way you're gonna get this cover back on when this thing's running. Because look at this starter clutch. Look at how it's got a flat spot. That starter clutch is only gonna fit on here. Now I'm sure a new standard starter clutch would probably fit, but this one, the original. And it's an air vein, it's got an air vein governor on it. And you could tell one of Fluffy's relatives had been in there. Now, look at the condition of this coil here. It's all deteriorated. The, the epoxy or whatever they used to seal the coil. And look at how they used to adhere the wire to it. Look at that wire wrapped around that tab in the end of it. This coil is also mounted in four spots, where all the new ones are two, mounted in two spots. Now, this coil you can't get anymore. So say I pull the flywheel off and put a new set of points in it and it's still got no spark, or it's got intermittent spark because this coil is bad. And what are you gonna do now? What are you gonna do, Terrell? You can't get the coil anymore. Maybe you can go on eBay or somewhere and find a new old stack coil. Or, Maybe I can put a new modern coil on there. Maybe I can make one work. So I looked into that. Now just in case you want to put points and condenser in this, you got one of these engines, we do have a video on that. And they do make what's called a magnetron. We did a video on that, but that magnetron isn't gonna work on this coil. There's not enough leg length. See the distance? between here and there to get that magnetron unit on there. So this said it was a five horse motor or engine. So I went outside and got me a coil off a newer five horse Briggs and Scranton and it's not gonna work. The holes, for one, aren't the right distance apart. Plus, where the holes are, they're way up here where these are way down on the bottom. I mean, our arc is right. You know, it's close. Because the, the, the newer five horse Briggs, the flywheel's a little smaller. This is actually the size of this engine the block and the, and the recoil and everything is about the size of a seven horse. Because that new light that I made to replace this light, you know, Terrell's custom crap, it says seven horse on it. And it's the same size as this. So this isn't gonna work, a five horse coil. Because I know some of you are gonna say, you just got a five horse coil, Terrell, off a new five horse. No, that ain't gonna work. So, I looked around, and this is a coil from a three, a two, a two to a four horse, horizontal vertical. And there's the part number. It had many part numbers. I think there is even three more part numbers, but this is the, this is the newest number for this. This is off like a four horse, would go on like a four horse push mower. And we're gonna show you a picture of that kind of mower. So I went outside in the junkyard and grabbed me a newer coil, the same coil I just showed you. This came off a four horse push mower. Again, they make it in horizontal vertical. Now if you notice, it's got the same same size holes, these little holes. 
and the distance is the same across. The only difference is we're not going to be able to get it, get it to mount because of the laminations. This angle is wrong. Look when I put it on here. See how that's wrong? So I think if I can get that right angle, that'll give me enough to get an air gap. So I got me a real fine Sharpie, and I'm just gonna go up underneath here, as close as I can. Now I've never done this before, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna work. As long as we can get some kind of air gap. I mean, it don't have to be exactly 10. So I'm gonna go over on my belt sander, and I'm gonna try to sand that down and see how close we can get. Ladybug, spring time, ladybug's out. <laughs> So when you sand on it like that, those laminates are going to want to separate on you. Now when you bolt it down, it's going to squeeze part of it, but not all of it. So I'm just going to stick it in the vise and squeeze them back together as much as I can. Now the coil's got to have a good ground to the block. And this looks like it's a little corroded, so it's not going to hurt to sand it. And we're also going to sand the, the magnets so we can get an accurate 10,000s. Now, I, every year, I've got to take a test for Briggs to keep my dealer status. And this year's test, they kind of went over. One of the questions on the test was about sanding the magnets and if that has anything to do with the spark and it doesn't. If these magnets are rusty, it's not gonna interfere with the spark. Oh, I think you're wrong, Carol. I think you're wrong. Yeah, well, I'm just telling you what was on the test. And if you answered it that, yeah, I did, then you would have got it wrong. Yeah, you got to sand the magnets. Well, you would have got that answer wrong. I'm just sanding them because I want an accurate 10,000. Let's see how good I did. Let's see if this is even going to work. I should have probably tried it first. Now, these electronic ignition coils, for you, for you out there that don't know, this side out is on there. And this side says cylinder side. So if you put this thing on upside down, it ain't going to work. So this side out. And it lines up. Lining up. My sand job, pretty good. Oh yeah, look, we got plenty of plenty of air gapage. Alright, let me put the let me put the air vein back on. Let's see if this is gonna work. Well, it doesn't line up with that, with this, like the old one. You know how that went over the old coil? So I could probably just cut that. I'm just gonna notch that out. Let's see if that works better, oh yeah. Well, got to cut a little more down here. 
There we go. Now it had two mounting points. You know, the other one was back here. So if this works, what I'll do is I'll make a spacer. I'll get me a little piece of tubing or something to stick in there as a spacer. And then I'll put the other screw in. So that way we just don't have one screw holding this in place. I'll make me a little spacer to go under there. But for now, I'm just going to stick that in there. Alright, so let's get 10 thousandths. And let's see if my little coil trick will work. Here's my spark tester. We gotta put the recoil on. See if we got spark now. Okay, well that didn't work, did it? So, that's the end of the video. And there's your dinner. Ah, no, I ain't giving up yet! I'm gonna go outside in the junkyard. I'm gonna see if I got a different flywheel. I think it has to do with the flywheel. And the magnets. That's why it ain't sparking with this modern coil. So I'm gonna go out in the junkyard and see if I could source up a, a flywheel about that size. All right, here's a 10 horsepower generator engine out here, Briggs and Scrat. Look at the recoil. Look at that, same size. Everything's the same. Well, I'm gonna pop this flywheel off. See how this magnets on here are different? It's just one magnet. Where that other flywheel had two separate magnets. So I'm gonna zip this flywheel off and I'm gonna see if it'll work on that engine. Cross our fingers. Here's the old flywheel. You can see the yellow paint on it. Here's the one I just took off that 10 horse. Keyway is about in the same spot. We got these tapped holes, so we should be able to put this back on if this works but the only difference like I said is the magnets see how these magnets are spaced and this is one solid magnet so let's see same diameter too let's see if the taper is the same oh yeah tapers the same drop the key in there Can't get the key going. There we go. Well, those holes are a little rusty. I don't want to mess with that now. Let's just let's just see if it'll work. If it works, I could tap them them holes. Plus, this shaft is all oily. Sticky. That's what makes those starter clutches squeal. You ever heard them squeal? 
You get a little scotch break. That's because when those starter clutches squeal, make that real high pitch squeal, that's because this part of the shaft is dirty or sticky. And it's making this clutch grab on that stickiness. And that's what makes that squealing. Better work. Woo! Woo! We got spark now, baby. We're bringing this old baby back to life. It was the flywheel. Now I know I don't know if you noticed. I know some of you y'all did notice that the coils were different. I took that new coil I showed you in the beginning and I sanded it because I thought maybe this coil was bad. So I sanded this one, tried it, we still had no spark, and I only did that to save time on filming. So I put the original one I sanded, the used one, I put that one back on. And then I found me in my spacer drawer a little spacer from something that I'd saved. And it happens to be the exact length I need. And of course I dropped it. So we can secure this air vane governor bracket. Because I thought, well, maybe that used coil, I took off that junk push mower, maybe that was bad. Let me try sanding that new one. And if we still got no spark, it's probably the flywheel. So I'm putting the original one back on it. The first one I sanded on. Because I only sanded on that new one just a little bit, just to try it real quick like. Just to make sure. We still got to hook our kill wire to this too, so we could kill it. We got our cup back on. That's something out of that Briggs and Scranton. We make the same stuff. Of course, this used this use coil got tape right there because somebody probably got it stuck in that cover. You know how that goes. So we should still have spark if this coil is good. Woo! All right. So let me secure the cover and uh, put the spark plug in and we'll give it a little shot of some dinosaur juice and see if it'll lick off because I'm sure the carburetor's got to be gone through next. So right after we got done filming that other segment, then the little white ball in my head went off. Just like it went off in your head. Terrell, maybe that 10 horsepower power coil off that generator engine you stole the flywheel off of. Maybe that'll work. Yeah, maybe it will. It looks like it's the same. Then you ain't gotta sit there and sand on it like I did. So let's find out. Because I went back out there. took that coil off. And you can see I hooked up my new kill wire. Yep, shazam. 10 horse coil, same. So now, 
We could disregard all that sanding and grinding, but hey, like I said, never did this before. Never had to. So I just sanded on them coils for nothing. That's all right. That one was a used coil. I'll just throw that in the scrap. That new coil though, I, like I said, I only sanded on that a little bit. That'll, that'll work if I ever have to put one on a push mower or something. I'll give him a discount because I sanded on it. You don't know what that is this is what an oil bath air cleaner looks like and of course it's broken but you would put oil in here up to this line there's usually a sticker on here that says fill it to that line that's what they used to use oil bath you didn't have to replace it often and then we got a throttle which works I sprayed some lubricant on the outside and then this is some kind of safety control up here and I don't know exactly how this works it's supposed to be when you let go it's supposed to somehow kick it back down to idle so it doesn't keep running off on you well let's see if it'll start as my buddy Rust Musty says I call him Rusty Will it run? He don't sound like that, but he does say. Oh, that sounds good. Promising. Woo! He wanted to come around and get me. Let's take a peek inside the float bowl real quick. See what surprises in there. Hmm. Actually, it's not too bad. A little bit of crud. Not bad. Let's uh, drain it. We got the exhaust fan on because we just started it. There's some crud in here. So I'm going to take this off, make sure there's flowage, spray this out. Maybe we'll get lucky. I doubt it, but we'll see. A little carb spray, a little Scotch Sprite. Wow, or as old as it is, really not bad. Like I said, I've been sitting outside for about five years over here at the shop. Should probably take a peek in the gas tank. Man. Hmm. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of bunch of something down in there. Like a layer of layer of something. Get a screwdriver. Oh yeah. A layer of nastiness. Well that's gonna have to be flushed out. See if this gas valve will open. Oh, yeah, that's tight. Boom, 
knows the last time this has been open. At least whoever owned it did shut the gas off. Look at that. That's your, that's varnish. Look at that. That is pure varnish. It almost looks like caramel. I'm gonna put that on your Sunday. Smells nasty. Well, I thought I'd spray it out with the pressure washer. Usually, when you get it clean, you find it's all rotted out. I mean, I could fix it probably with some Carol putty, but maybe I ought to just see, look around, see if I got a another tank to put on there. Well, I don't have a new old stock or used gas tank. But I got my man Elkskins looking for one. He might have one. So this is the only tank I could find. So we're gonna temporarily put this on so we keep this video going. And then I got me some big old zip ties. So we'll zip tie this on here. For now. Don't look bad either. And then we still got to pull the main nozzle out of this carburetor. So, I've got my Briggs screwdriver, or you can use a one of these screwdrivers. A lot of you have seen these before. You know, these screwdrivers with these bits. These bits work good. You got them at hardware store, tool store. So we need to pull this out first so we don't damage the end of this needle. This is a very simple carburetor. It's got a point on it. So we want to take that out and hope and pray that this nozzle is going to come out. Oh, boy, did I get lucky there. Let me spray a little, a little help under there. I'm going to make sure this nozzle isn't plugged up. Not too bad. So I'll clean that up. Make sure it's clear. Run, you know, there's some little cross drill holes. Make sure that make sure that's all cleared out. And then uh, we're gonna want to change this fitting temporary. That's one eighth pipe tread. So we'll just put this. so we can run a hose for now. Like I said, once I get a, a tank, a good used tank, then I'll put it back. To original. Clean the nozzle, put some gas in it, see if it'll run out of salt. Alright, got nozzle back in, got gas in it. 
Got the bowl on. I'm gonna set these at, this is the high speed here, the one in the center. Half, one and a half. And I'm gonna turn this one to one. Let's see what happens with this thing. Put the choke on. Crack this bowl up, see if there's gas in the float bowl. Oh yeah. Open this screw a little more, another turn. Let's put it at two turns. Let's make it rich. something to do with pitching pitching those little finishing blades obviously the the tool itself doesn't work but we were mainly focusing on getting it running so I'm gonna have to delve into why it's not spinning I don't know what operates that maybe there's a belt in there I don't know
Okay, I think I figured out how this lever works. So that lever is hooked to a cable which is hooked to this, this thing here. And I believe that this little tab on this thing Maybe you could shoot it from the top. You could see it better. I believe that little tab is supposed to be on this side of this throttle link. So what that does is that keeps this from throttling up. And then when you pull that lever up there on the handle, that pulls this out of the way and lets it throttle up. I think that's how it works. That's the only way I can think it would work. And the reason it's not spinning is it's got to have some kind of clutch in here. So I pull the four bolts off and pull the motor off. And of course there's all kinds of water and nastiness. So there's got to be a clutch under here. A centrifugal clutch and as you can see these shoes are frozen they're not expanding to grab this so if I take this clutch off put it in my blast cabinet and get these shoes freed up this thing will start spinning see address those little issues and go from there. Alright, I went ahead and got the, the clutch shoes all cleaned up and reassembled it so now they move free so it should start spinning the fan. And elk skins came through this morning with the gas tank so I got that all hooked up, got that sediment bowl back on all clean, sandblasted, put back together. In the uh, ankle chopper video, I show you how to take that thing apart and clean it. Put a new gas cap on it. And then I got this fixed. I know what this does. When it's in this position, it's at idle. So when you start this thing, it starts at idle. And then wherever you got the throttle, when you pull on this lever, it throttles it up so you could start finishing the concrete and then when you let go of it it returns it back to idle and let me show you how that worked they had that lever like I mentioned in the wrong spot and they had a spring in here but the spring was real weak and rusty you know because it's like 50 some years old so then I put a stronger spring in there to help return it to idle So let's go ahead and start it up and finish some concrete. today. You learned that we could take a Briggs and Scranton coil and sand on the laminate and make it work. We learned that we can take the 10 horse, probably between 7 and 10 horse flywheel and coil and use it on an engine that has this 4 bolt and as you can see this coil is all cracked. 
it was probably no good or intermittent. We learned about the little clutch being froze on it. Did the carpet trader. Now we've taken an old piece of equipment and got it going again, got it working again. Somebody might want this that's in the concrete business, a local guy. I'd probably sell it to him. Subscribe to this YouTube channel, Terrell Fixes All. Ring the bell for notification. Ding, 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 ding. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Go to our web store, buy some Terrell apparel. Gotta look good while you're watching these videos. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! Five Horse Master Trial! Got it going again! Oh, early 60s piece of equipment! Boy, they don't make them like that anymore. Still running! What are you doing? Coming to free the turf tigers, man. That's not gonna happen. And I told Felix and Kitten all about you. And they want to meet you. You know they haven't eaten yet today. Yeah, and they're real hungry too. Yeah, well, you should probably feed them instead of starving them, man. Oh yeah, we're gonna feed them. Uh, 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 they're not gonna like eating me. Uh, uh, I'm on an old plant. Taro Neurotic here, the Turf Tiger King. And during the making of this video, no lawnmowers were harmed. And there's your dinner.